suppose we're dealing with a problem. Maybe it looks like this negative 6x and it's got a negative 4th power. Okay, so remember whenever you have a negative exponent and you have parentheses, it applies to everything on the inside. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make this negative 6 to the negative 4 and x to the negative 4. Thank goodness, the focus is doing something goofy there. Okay, so now I have negative exponents. Whenever I have negative exponents, I like to draw a fraction bar because I know I'm going to be moving things to the numerator and the denominator. So this is the first thing I'm going to move. So it's negative 6 to the negative 4. This negative has nothing to do with what's getting moved. This is the negative exponent, which means I'm going to put the whole negative 6 down in the denominator. When I cross the line, I change the sign, but I change the sign of the exponent, not of the number. It's still negative 6. Okay. Then I have to deal with this. This is going to be x to the negative fourth. It has to come to the denominator, and it becomes positive x, or x to the positive fourth power. Now, when there's nothing in the numerator, I put a 1, because all of these things were 1 times this. So now I have to keep going. So if when I look at this, this is an even power, right? So that means it's going to be positive. So that is going to be 6 to the fourth, x to the fourth. Now, if I needed to evaluate that and get a number, I would go to my calculator and that would type in the 6. Oops, turn it on first. That always helps. 6 to the power and then type in the 4 and I'm going to get 1,296. So my answer is 1 over 1,296 x to the 4. Now let's talk about how I would enter that in buzz. 1 divided by and then here's the thing, because there's more than one thing down here, I need these parentheses. So when you go to do this in Buzz, use that equation editor button to check and to make sure that it looks like this, because this is how I want my answer to look. Okay, now while we're talking about this, if you have a negative number and you have a bunch of stuff inside, negative and positive exponents, so that should be a y and a z to the negative fifth, all of that to the negative third power. So again, just like before, this is the same concept except a little bit harder. Just more problems. Negative 5 to the negative 3, x to the negative 2 to the negative 3, y to the 4 to the negative 3, z to the negative 5 to the negative 3. So now that's my first step, right? So now I'm going to say, well, gosh, this is going to be negative 5 to the negative 3, x to the positive 6, because I'm multiplying those exponents, y to the negative 12, and x, excuse me, why am I messing up the x's and the z's? x to the positive 15th. Okay, so now, you guys, when I have negative exponents and I'm ready to move them, I draw a fraction bar because I know I'm going to be putting things in the denominator. This is negative. It comes down here like this. This is positive. So I take care of it one thing at a time. This doesn't need to move. This does need to move, so it comes down here. This does not need to move. Now, if I'm evaluating negative 5 to the third power, it's negative 125. So my answer looks like this. Now, we don't typically put the negative in the denominator. We would move it to the top and write it as negative x to the 6th, z to the 15th, over 125, y to the 12th. Gosh, that's a lot going on with that problem. And in buzz, I will use parentheses for the numerator and the denominator. z to the 15th divided by parentheses 125, y to the 12th. So in buzz, because there's the x and the z, I would need parentheses for the numerator. And because there's the 125 and the y to the 12th, I would need parentheses for the denominator. So what's the big idea here? I want you to see when you have a bunch of junk going on here, take the thing that's the exponent, apply it to each of the things. Then draw a fraction bar and move the things that need to be moved. 